Welcome back to the Professor Stu Voice channel. I'm Professor Victoria and this is Professor Corey and today we're going to be talking about quantum numbers and quantum numbers give us an address to an electron of an atom. So the reason we're so focused on the electron right now and in this chapter is that we're, we're going to try to find the shape of the atom or the shape of the molecule and if you remember atoms have a really really small nucleus in a large space around it where the electrons exist so these electron clouds are really going to determine the size and the shape of the atom and therefore the molecule remember uh, the photoelectric effect how we were talking about you can bombard a piece of metal and inject an electron and that led us to believe and, and understand that the light or electromagnetic radiation has particle-like properties, not just wave properties, but particle properties. We call that the wave-particle duality. Well, particles, as it turns out, when they're moving, also have a wavelength. They also have wave-like properties. So if we treat the electron like a wave and use quantum mechanics, and this outside the scope of, of general chemistry, so we just call it a box. So we, we put the electron into the quantum uh, mechanics box, and the calculations that are involved with that spit out four different um, quantum numbers. And these four quantum numbers, there's a unique set of quantum numbers for every single electron in all of the atoms. And this serves as like an address or where that electron may exist around that nucleus. So let's start with the first one. It's the principal quantum number. And this is um, designated with the letter N. And we saw this in the Bohr model. Um, Bohr had assigned principal quantum numbers to his orbits where the electrons would exist. Um, the N equals one, N equals two. So as we move further away from the um, nucleus, we're going to have greater potential energy, it's a distance, and also that electron further away from the nucleus means that it's it, this is a bigger, this is potentially a bigger atom with a higher n value. And we can we can figure out n values using our periodic table, but this is only for the outermost electron. And it, it seems kind of silly at first, like why we would only care about this one electron. Well, being the outermost electron, that's going to help us with our size. And, and it's really simple to figure out. So let's just show you that. So taking this blank periodic table here, and, and the important part for N is knowing what the period number is. And you should understand and you should recognize this term main group elements. The main group elements are the first two groups and the last six. And usually you have helium written over here in this space. But um, that's okay. So when we're talking about n, so n equals the period number for the main group element. So let's say this element here has an n of 4. This element here has an n of 3. But if you once you get into the transition elements, it's here in the green, now n is the period minus 1. So this n value is 4 minus 1 or 3. Similarly, the lanthanide and actinide series, that's down here in the orange, and this entire block exists in this space right here. And if we put it in there, the periodic table would be just too wide and just too cumbersome. So we, we put it out and put it down below, but that doesn't change the, the um, period number. So period number six and period number seven down here. So let's say we have an element, let's say here on the periodic table, and we want to know what n is. It is period minus two. So this for this one, it would be six minus two or n equals four. The next quantum number is what we call angular momentum, and it's um, noted with an L, and oftentimes it's italicized, so it's a little bit um, fancy looking. And if we know our n value, we know the possible values for L because L can be zero, so we, it can always be zero, um, up to n minus one. So if n equaled one, then L could only be zero. But if n was two, L could be zero or one, and so on and so on. 
there is a, a notation we use for these. Like L equals zero, we call this an S orbital. L equals one, we call a P. Two is a D and three is an F. There are shapes associated with these orbitals. Um, so the S orbitals have a spherical shape while the P orbitals have a dumbbell shape. Um, the D's have a clover leaf shape and the F's have many shapes, so we just say many shapes. We can determine L for the outermost electron with this same periodic table, and we designate these, these areas with like we call them blocks. So the S block elements are here in the pink. So all of those, and this is where it's important that helium is actually over here. So it is also in the S block. And then we have, so for the outermost electron, anything that's in here, the outermost electron is in an L equals zero or a spherical orbital. Any electron, any outermost electron for anything in this blue region will have an orbital, be in an orbital that is a dumbbell shape because L equals one. L equals two down here for the outermost electron for the transition metals and L equals three for the lanthanide and actinide. So this is the outermost electron for any of the elements in this area, L is going to be three. And so you can define what that outermost electron's shape is, the, the orbital that it's existing in. This is just um, a visual representation of these orbitals. And you can see down at the bottom left, we've got this one S. So the 1 means that the principal energy level, or n, is equal to 1, and the s is telling us that the l is equal to 0. l equals 0, that's the um, s orbital, and that has a spherical shape. If we go up to the p's, notice there are no p's in, in um, the, the p's start with um, principal energy level 2, because l can only be 0 to n minus 1. So this n is 2, and the l can either be 0, the sphere, we see that over there with the 2s, but it, it can also be 1, which is the dumbbell shape, and that's what we're seeing here. Right, so this kind of, you can see these different lobes here. Um, my dumbbell drawing is, is a little crude, but you can see these different lobes, and uh, what's interesting here is we have, we have different orientations here. Uh, one, and we're going to get to that in, an, in another uh, video, but each of these is called an orbital. It's a region of probability where the electron can exist. And each orbital holds two electrons, and electrons will exist in the lowest energy state that they can. So we want you to just, we just want to mention that now, put that in the back of your mind, and we're going to be revi revisiting that as we go along. I just want to mention the, the clover leaf shape. So, you know, it, because our, our hand drawn clover leaves might not be that great either. But um, <laughs> right. at L equals two, um, we do have that clover leaf shape, and that's what's represented up here. So this is the three, it says 3d, so the three is the principal energy level, or n, n equals three, and then the d, that is from l equals two. Okay, so here's some practice. What is n and l for the outermost, or most energetic, highest energy electron? for chlorine and then for iron. So chlorine is over here. It's in a main group. So N equals the period. So for chlorine, N equals three. It's in the P block. P block is when L, and if you kind of forget, to S, P, D, F. So we have L equals zero, L equals one, L equals 2 here for D, and L equals 3 down here for F. So must be, if it's in the P block, L equals 1. And for iron, similarly, we're in the transition zone here, the transition metal zone. So it is N equals 4 minus 1, or 3. So N equals 3 for iron for its outermost electron. We're in the D block, so L equals 2. Now notice when we said that L could be 0 up until N minus 1. So we have this um, example with our chlorine. We had N equals 
um, 3. So L could have been 0, 1, or 2 when n equals 3. When n equals 3, yeah. So in this case, we were in the p block, and n, n is equal to 3, period 3, and L, because it's in the p block, is equal to 1. Over here, in the S block, L is equal to 0, but the N is equal to 3. And N is equal to 3 in that transition metal down here. Down here, And that's where our L would be equal to 2 and give us the D block. And we do not have L equals 3 when N equals 2 because or when, N, when N equals 3, this is what we're doing, when N equals 3, L can be 0, 1, or 2, because it goes up to n minus 1. So no f um, orbitals for the um, principal energy level of n equals 3. Clear as mud? <laughs> this is this is takes a little getting used to. And um, trust me, it, it sounds like a different language at first. And you, you will get the hang of this. It, it'll just take some, it'll take a little bit of time and some practice. And we have lots of materials to help you through this. But and starting with this, we've got some practice. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can see if you can get through a few of these questions and then look at the answers and, and, and see if you can sort out the ones that you didn't understand initially. Yep. Pause that the video. Be a great start. And here are your answers. And I want to point out, um, just kind of reiterate, that these quantum numbers are the address for any single given electron. And we've been talking about how, you know, the possible possible um, L values given an N. That's, that's not for any given electron. One electron has only one set of quantum numbers. But a given energy level, like N equals 3, can have multiple L values. Thanks so much for watching. Come back again. We'll have another installment of uh, quantum numbers. We'll have the other two. So these, this was first two, and then we're going to talk about the second two as well. Bye-bye.